I'm sure you could probably hear the panting, but my dog refused to let me shoot this video without him here, so he might pop in every now and again from this part. But anyway, I hate not finishing things, and it's been a little more than two months since the Asami Joe video, and it's been a little less than three months since we started this mini series that encompasses the Porn Star series that we do, taking a look at the various women that were former AV idols that appeared in Super Sentai. Today we finish this mini-series and we'll be looking at Nao Oikawa, who, if we are grading on a curve, enjoyed the most success in your entertainment career both pre- and post-Super Sentai. And to get this out of the way now, yes, Nao Oikawa is the final AV idol of three different women that appeared in a Power Rangers type series that were previously porn stars. That means Saito Tameo of Toriki Sentai O-Ranger and Kei Mizutani of Seiju Sentai Ginga Man, hell, even now Oikawa's former castmate Yumi Sugimoto are not eligible. And after I've completely butchered all three of their names, I will say the first two were Gravier models or pinup girls who only posed nude but didn't actually appear in any hardcore pornography, while the latter appeared in a Japanese Playboy magazine. However, she was not nude, and it was only for an interview, but it did spark rumors among the Super Sentai community that she had. I figured I would address this now, because I'm sure somebody at some point would bring it up. And that's not to say that I won't talk about these women in the future. It's just for now, in this particular series, this will be the final episode in the AV idols that appeared in Power Rangers type shows. I won't lie, it'll be weird closing out this chapter in the series, however, it must be done. Thankfully, not only did now Oikawa have a pretty well-documented and interesting pre and post Sentai career, she is also a little less obscure than the previous idols we've covered on this channel. Thank fucking God. This is the story of the third porn star in a Power Rangers type series, now Oikawa. Now Oikawa was born on April 21st, 1981 in Hiroshima, Japan. She seemed to have a fairly standard upbringing. What's very notable though is her family's affinity to the game of Mahjong, which would be important to her from an early age all the way up to the present. In comparison to a lot of my other videos, Now Oikawa has an extensive amount more information available for her. It's literally night and day in comparison to the other AV idols that we've covered on here. The only thing is that a lot of the finer details on Now Oikawa or like kind of some of the more obscure ones are a little harder to find, specifically what her real name is. Like other AV actresses, now Oikawa was a stage name given to her after she was scouted for AV. And here's the thing, Wikipedia does have other names that she has gone by, but after doing some digging on non-wiki based sites, I wasn't able to find her real first and last name. Which I can respect, we're all entitled to some level of privacy out there, especially on the internet. So any information that pertains to some of her more personal details or like her love life I was able to dig up, I'm not going to be sharing with you guys today. Now Oikawa and her family would move from Hiroshima to Tokyo at a young age. Here she would attend school and begin going to design school soon after into college. It wasn't long into her college career though that she would join the AV world, and her journey into the entertainment industry would officially begin. To quote Now Oikawa, that time my hair was bleached and curly. My agency told me to get my hair back to straight black. One day in the office, one staff picked out Oikawa as the family name from a book. Another staff picked Nao from another book. And and this is where my stage name came from. The rest is history. Now Oikawa would debut in the AV world in September of 2000 with the film entitled Honey Bee's Mischief. However, would find little success in the AV industry at this point in her career. She worked mainly for the labels of Cosmoplan, Alice Japan, and Momotor AV companies, just to name a few. So the usual suspects. It wasn't until she met famed Japanese AV director Goro Tamiyaki that she would finally be given a direction that would help jumpstart her career. You know, as much as I try to get away, everything just always seems to find a way to come full circle. All joking aside, the man has had a very prolific career, so next year I'll definitely look into giving him his own video. Her first film by Goro Tameki that would catapult her career was Another Side of Nao Oikawa. In it, she engaged in more provocative and explicit acts that in her previous AV outings she wasn't doing. She was 19 at the time of the recordings and would go on to star in hardcore films through 2004. Films such as Goldmember. No, not that one. Uh, I uh, couldn't actually find an image of it. If Now Was My Pet. Hip and Vagina 4. Makes you wonder what happened in parts one through three. And Lady Snowblood, to name a few. She actually has a very extensive and prolific career in AVs. When I was doing research on this particular portion of the video, 
I found that she's starred in at least 80 different AVs. Not only Kawa's fame would explode after working with Goro Tameki. In 2003, she was named by video distributors DMMMS number one actress on their website. And in 2004, she would also be named number two despite retiring from the company. Also in 2012, she was ranked number 42 of the 100 all-time best AV idols in Japan by DMM. To this day, she is still very well renowned in the world of AVs. One fact I always wonder while making these type of videos are, what do the parents think of their children joining the pornography business? It's something that I rarely hear ever discussed. And the thought always kind of pops up in my head is, are they even supportive of their children? Well, in now Oikawa's case, we do actually have an answer for that. In a 2005 article of Tokusatsu Shinsu Nagumi, I probably butchered that, now Oikawa responded to the question of AV idols being mostly disowned by families after entering into the field by saying that, quote, without the support from my mother, I never would have made it as an AV adult video performer. Given the subject material that we do cover on this channel, yeah, we try to have some fun, but you know, when I see stuff like this, kind of warms my heart a bit. As previously mentioned, Japan does have a strange censorship laws, so unfortunately now Oikawa's work is also not immune to this. However, in this case, she does have an extensive collection of uncensored work. Now here's the thing, I'm not gonna link any of it or tell you which ones they are. Consider that your hallmark for tonight, but what I will say is that if you are looking for it, it's really easy to find. Boo, you stink! However, this is far from the end of Naoi Kawa's story though. Following her retirement from the AV career, Naoi Kawa used her newfound fame to help launch her into the world of mainstream entertainment. After leaving the world of AV, Naoi Kawa would go on to star and, and direct an episode of the horror series entitled Fantazuma Cursed House or Fantazuma Norayo no Yakata. She would later go on to star in various late night variety shows between 2005 and 2006, and while her fame was growing outside of the AV world, it still wasn't quite there yet. Personally, I think she started to hit her stride in 2005 when she appeared on Garo, and this was kind of her first toe dipped into the whole tokusatsu genre. Following her role in the Garo series, she would have bit roles here and there in shows like Ultraman and Kamen Rider, but would really come into her own after she was cast as one of the main villains in what I consider one of the best Super Sentais ever created. I have a bit of a confession to make. Back in the Asami Joe video, I made a comment about Engine Sentai Go Under being a little bit like painful to sit through. And, um, you know, I had to watch that, at least for my own sake, uh, as research for this particular video. And, um, I gotta say, I was fucking wrong. This show was brilliant. It was literally so good I had to binge watch the last 20 episodes at once. The tongue-in-cheek humor, not taking itself too seriously, while still being able to have a lot of heart and memorable moments. What can I say, Engine Sentai Go Under is a masterpiece and literally a must-watch. Really, so much of the show just works so well, and now we call it is another one of those pieces that fits into the show perfectly. Her portrayal as the villain Kegaresha is exceedingly good. Her acting is this cheesy for sure, but it really shows off her range as an actress. She is entertaining and engaging, yet when needing to be menacing and a force to be reckoned with, she does so with such finesse while playing such a goofy character. I couldn't find a concrete quote for this. However, when developing Go Andre, they wanted to borrow various elements that make Gekiso Sentai Car Ranger and pay homage to that particular series. They were right to do so. One of those being the casting quirk of of hiring a former AV idol to play a villainous role. I won't lie, I kind of had these preconceived notions going in that it was gonna be one of those series that, you know, they try to capture the magic of something that was long past in an attempt to, you know, get something good to come out for a season. And, um, man, I'm glad I was dead wrong. In a lot of ways, Goanger and now Oikawa are superior to their original counterparts. The show was so successful, it spawned a 10 year anniversary movie that came out back in 2018. I won't spoil anything here, but let me just say, they do my girl Kegaresha 
Justice. There are literally a ton of episodes that I could recommend as a Naoi Kawa showcase. However, I'll name three must-watch episodes that aren't too spoiler heavy. Episode 4, Engine Trouble, is a good start if you're going to jump into one. Followed by episode 14, Doki Doki Every Day. But I think the most important one would be episode 31, Idol Debut. Now, keep in mind, the show is very weird. But if you can suspend your critical thinking minds for 30 minutes at a time, it's amazing. Episode 31 is a very, very important episode in the career of Naoi Kawa. In it, the three lead female actresses must join forces to create a pop idol group, yeah, it's a little ridiculous, known as G3 Princesses. This bit would go over so well in Japan that the G3 Princesses would make sporadic appearances and live shows. It also helped to catapult Naoi Kawa's popularity as the Guy Arc's chief of sexiness. This group went over so well that they made an appearance in another Super Sentai season, even a few years later, as a cameo in that particular show. They literally had nothing to do with the plot of the show or the episode that it was in. It was just purely random as fuck, but they were so popular at the time that it just worked. Now, you're probably asking yourself, similar to Asami Jo and Rika Nanase, did Naoi Kawa's portrayal of Kegaresha make it onto American screens? I'm not even sure why you're asking at this point. Of course she fucking didn't. My theory always being that they didn't want to have an adult actress portrayed on children's programming in the United States. However, with the advent of the internet being as popular as it was in 2008, it would be even harder to hide the fact that one of the show's stars was a former porn star. So yeah, it was pretty much a for sure thing that she wasn't gonna be included. Following the success of Engine Sentai Go Onger, Naoi Kawa would fade into obscurity, never to be seen again is what I would have said if we were talking about Asami Jo Arika Nanase. Now Oikawa, on the other hand's popularity just continued to grow. As stated earlier, following the completion of Engine Sentai Go Onger, now Oikawa would continue to make appearances here and there in various tokusatsu related programming, including Kamen Rider with Decade Movie, as well as reprising her role as Kegareshia for various Sentai related content. However, she would still branch out and become a major star in her own right. As a whole, I feel it would be almost impossible to do now Oikawa's career any type of justice. Well, that's because I look at Engine Sentai Goanger as one of the turning points in her career. it has been a lot of different movies, TV shows, stage plays. Hell, she's even been like the co-host on various radio shows. What the hell hasn't she done? This isn't a joke either. Unfortunately, sources like IMDB as well as Wikipedia don't really have her career cataloged very well. Both present decent narratives for, but are hardly enough to really get a grasp on everything Naoi Kawa has done in her career. I instead turn to a couple alternative sources, which funny enough, Boobapedia, yes, that's a real place, had pretty much a copy paste of her wiki page. However, on there, extra details on her career and other quotes from Japanese magazines could be found. I won't be linking the Boobapedia article here for you know obvious reasons, but if you just pop her name into the website, she'll come up real easily. However, really, I didn't even need to go that far because right on her wiki page is a link to her own website that is still uploaded and maintained to this day. Seriously, I can't stress enough how great this is. With the previous AV idols that we've discussed on this channel, I'd be lucky enough to find a blog that had an extensive amount of research done on her, or maybe a couple of old Japanese articles here and there, but on this website, we literally have everything that we could possibly want to look to go over for the video. As you can see, she had a very, very extensive career, and following Go Andrew, she's become a pretty renowned entertainer overall. Something to keep in mind about this catalog is that some of the stuff that's on this particular website is going to be stuff from her pre Go Andrew days when she was just trying to break into the entertainment industry. So, despite what may have been said on IMDb, she has been in a lot of different things. As you can see, she is a pretty celebrated stage performer and has either hosted or been a part of numerous radio broadcasts. And given today's obsession with podcasts, I wouldn't be surprised if she had her own at this point. To go through all of Nao Oikawa's work would take a whole nother video, like seriously. And honestly, most of the items on her biography are available to watch, so instead of making another video, I'd challenge you to seek out some of these on your own, because 
She is a very talented actress in her own right, and you probably would get a kick out of some of her stuff. If you want to see something current of Nao Oikawa's, she recently starred in a television show entitled Nippori Charlie's as the character Naoka Makoto. The show and her part aired this year, so it's the most current of Nao Oikawa's television work that you can find. Nao Oikawa's website is called oinao.com. Unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce that, so I just spelled it out for you. That, as I said, is still being updated to this day, and she has a personal blog that unfortunately isn't updated anymore, but its most recent entry was in 2019. She's also very, very active on Twitter. I'll try not to get blocked this time. She is also super active and semi-popular on YouTube, with content coming out bi-weekly. Unlike the other two AV idols we've previously discussed, now Oikawa has taken her success and expanded upon it, and to this day is still doing what she loves by entertaining people. Honestly, it's pretty fucking inspirational. Unfortunately, most of her blogs and personal website are in Japanese, but with the help of various translators, it's 100% possible to navigate these websites. Her YouTube channel also has the ability to auto-translate. I won't lie, it's kind of weird getting this far in the video and not having information just stop. But if you are interested in Nao Oikawa's YouTube content, because she does make some pretty good stuff, I'm going to have her website and her YouTube channel linked below for you to check out. And really, you honestly should. Nao Oikawa has lived an extensive life in the entertainment industry. Like I said before, this video really doesn't do justice to how much Nao Oikawa has done in her career. And you should seriously go check her stuff out. She's seriously talented. One last detail is that she is still in love with the game Mahjong, actively appearing at tournaments and publicly talking about the game. So if you're a Mahjong player, you should definitely look her up. It's funny to think of how many people doubted her ability to become a star in the very beginning of her career. Everything I read about her initial days in the AV industry seemed honestly pretty fucking bleak. But somehow she persevered and fought to get everything she has earned to this day. In my previous AV Idol Sentai videos, I talked about how I felt that Rika Nanase and Asami Jo were trying to do more than just be AV idols, but just couldn't seem to find a way to break into the industry past Super Sentai. And, you know, it honestly always kind of genuinely bummed me out. Every single one of the AV idols who appeared on these Tokusatsu shows were absolutely talented in their own right. Whether it be through personal decision, unusual circumstances, etc., it's always sad to see an individual deviate from their dreams and decide to walk away, especially when things are rough. And I feel that. So I've intentionally left out some more personal details about Nao Oikawa in this video, because like I said before, we're all entitled to some level of privacy. Um, but what I will say is, since I've started this little series on <laughs> biographical looks at porn stars and whatnot, now Oikawa was always the type of person that I was hoping to find. Having the strength to see through the hardships, the tenacity to keep going, knowing that she wanted more out of life and going for it. In the end, I pity individuals who snub anyone in the entertainment industry. If they like what they're doing, great. And if they want something else, nothing should stop them. I believe all choices are relative, but those choices often define who we are. And in Nao Oikawa's case, it is of someone who has had their own setbacks for sure, like so many of us do on our road to success. But her choice to never give up shows me that Nao Oikawa is, was, and will always be somebody special.